Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to your Cricket Happening show today. And we are in this Cricket Happening, this part of the Cricket Happening show, your host Ram along with you is going to look at two test matches that's happening. One is in the Border Gavaskar Trophy Series between India and Australia, where Australia uh, are having a firm grip on the match uh, by actually declaring at 7 for 604, monumental centuries for Michael Clark and... Um, uh, Ricky Ponting, two double centuries um, for, I mean, two double centuries in the innings, one for Clark and one for Ponting. And uh, Clark uh, becoming the third person uh, in the test history to score a triple century and a double century in a test series. So that's hats off to Michael Clark, the captain of Australia. And Ricky Ponting also stamping his, uh, uh, his, uh, his presence, his experience, his authority over the Indian bowlers. Now, as far as India were concerned, India finished at 61 for 2 at close of play. Uh, Gautam Gambhir is not out on 30. Sachin Tendulkar getting his, probably his last chance here to, in Australia to actually score his uh, 100th test century. Uh, but India is strictly struggling. 61 for 2, Sevag and uh, uh, Rahul Dravid has been dismissed. Uh, Rahul Dravid once again having a problem, uh, you know, failing with the bat. Uh, not only that, uh, in fact, uh, getting clean bowled for the sixth time in the series. And this time it was off the elbow of the bowling of Ben Hilfenos. So that's a really, really, I would say, alarming signs for Rahul Dravid, according to me. Now, uh, let's look at the other match uh, which is happening. That is between Pakistan and uh, England. Uh, today was the second test match which was played at a very, very dry, arid surface, I would say. And that was at the Sheikh Zayed Stadium here in Abu Dhabi. And Pakistan uh, finished at 256 for 7. Miss Baul Haq. Is really holding the fort for Pakistan, not out on 83. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, there was not really much to talk about, but I thought English bowlers bowled very well. And what was very interesting in this particular uh, match was uh, on the first day, was the ball was turning square and they had two spinners, England, Monty Panacer and Graham Swan, who definitely took advantage. They took four wickets out of the seven that fell. So the majority of the wickets was uh, gone to the spinners, and which I'll be dwelling about. So let's first uh, go on to the a match in the Border Gavaskar Trophy series where Australia resumed at their overnight score of 335 for 3 and stretched it to 604 for 7 declared. Uh, Ponting made 221, 21 fours in that uh, knock of his Ricky Ponting. Michael Clark, as I said, third person in the annals of test history to make a triple century and a double century. This was uh, once done by the Australian uh, great uh, Sir Donald Bradman. So he made 210 of 275 balls, 26 fours and 1 six. Just carried on in that many fashion. And at 470, in fact, this was a monumental partnership because uh, if you look at it, it is almost yielded um, a 285 run partnership uh, between them. It was 84 for three was the last time that the last wicket fell for Australia. And uh, the, the fourth wicket fell with the score at 470. So you can just imagine what a monumental partnership uh, uh, it has been. In fact, it is 385 run partnership to be precise. Uh, and uh, uh, Michael Hussey was a victim of a very good piece of fielding by uh, Gautam Gambaris. Michael Hussey stretched forward, pushed the ball to silly point, and before Hussey could actually get onto the crease, Gautam Gambir had taken the ball in a flash and you know throw down the stumps at the at the batting end at the Hussey's end, and Hussey was out of the crease. Hussey had come a long way. It stretched forward to Ashwin. And that was it. Hussey was walking around 25 with three fours. Brad Haddon, I would say, uh, got himself into some form with the advantage of Australia being in a good position. He was not around 42 when the declaration came with one four and two sixes. Uh, Siddle was a victim of a carom ball from uh, Ashwin for two. Ryan Harris was not out on 35. That was a good knock from Ryan Harris. Not out on 35, giving good support to Brad Haddon. 533 for three. And then finally, uh, Michael Clark, the captain, applied the declaration 604 for 7 declared. Pitch is playing absolutely easy. Uh, you can garner a lot of runs on this pitch, there's no doubt about that. Zahir Khan, 31 4, 96 runs on 2 wickets. 1 for 136 for Umay Shadav after toiling hard and uh, probably could be putting a better line today. 53 over, 6 maidens, 194 runs on 3 wickets. Manfully toiled um, uh, Ravichan Rashwin, the Red Amos spinner. 30 over, 6 maidens, none for 100 for Ishan Sharma, none for 55 Sevag. And India. Uh, finishing uh, at a score of 61 for 2. Uh, Virendra Sehwag was gone early today. He was gone of a full toss, which he actually drove it back to Siddle. Siddle held it gleefully, gone 18 of 18 balls with 3 fours. 
Rahul Dravid continues his problems with getting clean ball six times in the series. Clean ball by Ilfan Haas of the of the elbow. It ricocheted off his elbow and into the stump she went. So Tendulkar is not out on 12 edge stumps. Gambir is looking confident. 30 of 56 balls with four fours. 61 for two was the end result for India at the end of the uh, second day's play here at Adelaide Oval against Australia. Uh, Balling Harris six overs, none for 18. Ilfan Haas one for 21. And Siddle, the wicket taker, one for 13. And well, let's uh, let, head on to the uh, other match uh, which I'll be talking about uh, Pakistan versus England. This was the second test match which started at the Sheikh Zayed Stadium here in Abu Dhabi. And what was very interesting was uh, it was Pakistan who won the toss and uh, elected to bat. And uh, well, the partnership definitely uh, did well. The opening partnership went on to 51 uh, before the spinners were the one who actually came in and gave the breakthrough. And it was Monty Panasar who gave the breakthrough. Uh, Small Madafis was uh, castled by Panasar for 31 before boundaries. Tuffy Kumar uh, was out to a very good delivery from Swan, which went on to the stumps. He was out for 16 with two fours. Uh, Azhar Ali contributed at 24. That was the time when 61 for two. Um, uh, Pakistan suddenly had a lot of wickets falling with... Um, uh, it was uh, two quick pickets falling as uh, Stuart Broad came in and clean bowled Azhar Ali for 24 with one four. Yunus Khan was clean bowled by Broad for 24. All, all the balls actually incoming deliveries uh, with the ball batsman missed. And finally, Asad Shafiq uh, joined into a good party of the century party at uh, 103 for uh, uh, four when Azhar Ali fell. The score went on to 200. It's the exact 100 run partnership. Asad Shafiq played some very good strokes, but what was very good to see was Ms. Baal, who was grinding the attack, but also interspersed with a lot of big hits. And it took a very good liking for Monty Panacer, um, you know, uh, slamming him for four sixes. And certain sixes were hit uh, right, from the, um, uh, right from the crease. There was not many movement. He just went through with the stroke. He was not out on 83, with five, five fours and four sixes. And all the four sixes hit over long on of the volume of Monty Panacer. Adnan Akmal was LBW bowled up, uh, brought for nine. Abdul Rahman was clean bowled by Swan towards the end. And um, were one of those, uh, and two sixes that um, uh, Miss Baul Haq hit was in the last hour of the day. Now, uh, could you imagine this? This is something very, very difficult to really, uh, you know, believe it. Because uh, I can understand if uh, Indian uh, Virendra Sehwag or uh, India's Virendra Sehwag would be shy the freedy if he was in the last tour of the day, I uh, would have slammed them for six But Ms. Baal Haq had so much confidence in his own ability and in his own uh, play that he had, uh, I, would, I would rather say that he had uh, had uh, uh, Red Panacer's uh, spin very well. Uh, he went in and uh, just, uh, you know, swatted him for two sixes, two consecutive sixes, uh, which he did it uh, previously when he when he was in his initial part of innings and then at the fag end of the day the last hour of the day monty panacer was slammed for two sixes and uh, i would say that uh, it is Ms. Baal who is holding the fort for them not out on 83 of 168 balls five fours and four sixes ajmal is not out on not and pakistan finished at a very good i wouldn't say a very good score here but uh, considering that the ball was turning square on the first day itself uh, with uh, panacer and swan really taking advantage taking four wickets among them um, well, uh, 256 for 7, uh, Anderson 18 overs, 5 minutes, none for 45, the new ball is uh, still there, so probably uh, England will be looking at, uh, you know, probably uh, disturbing this pair, but as far as Ms. Baal Huck is there, uh, Pakistan can probably try to reach a 350 mark, uh, that's what my feeling is. And uh, bowling, James Anderson 18 overs, 5 minutes, none for 45, Broad was simply superb, he bowled very well, he hit the right areas, and... Uh, uh, the, the rewards was there. I said it's a very dry surface and that's the precise reason the spinners were able to get some turn. But Broad, I thought, uh, bowled well on this particular surface of the Sheikh Zayed Stadium in Abu Dhabi. 23 overs, 3 minutes, 47 runs and 3 wickets. He took some very vital wickets, I would say. Uh, and then Monty Panacer, 33 overs, 9 minutes, 91 runs and 1 wicket. Uh, got some tap from his bowl. Huck. Graham Swan was impressive as ever. 18 overs, 2 minutes, 52 runs and 3 wickets. And Jonathan Trott bowled 2 overs for just 12 runs. So 256 for 7 Pakistan. Probably looking into a very good score if Ms. Baal Haq is going to stay because there's not much company to come for Ms. Baal Haq if you know you know Omar Gulan Jurayat Khan who is there uh, to, still to come. So probably Ms. Baal Haq will be, has to take it upon himself tomorrow uh, to weather the first session because there will be morning due on the pitch and that will be to some advantage. And besides uh, we have the cherry, the red cherry uh, in the hands of the uh, pace bowlers. So that is going to be an interesting session tomorrow whether England can really keep them to a total of uh, 300. And besides, just talking about the match between India and Australia once again, uh, since I'm having time on this uh, YouTube broadcast, I would like to say that uh, for India, oh, the first goal will be 404 runs to avoid the follow-on. 
uh, you know and uh, I, I think it is going to be uh, uh, very very difficult yes uh, the maestro Sajin Tendulkar uh, is there along with Gautam Gambhir looking good but you know uh, but one thing I, I would say in favor of India is that if they could actually bide their time uh, play the correct strokes uh, you know look at the balls that the Australians are bowling and really you know play it on merit and bide their time at the crease uh, the pitch is good the first session would be again crucial but uh, after that uh, the pitch is, going, pitch is uh, becoming very easy for batting as we know sunny under sunny skies and as you know uh, in Australia and Adelaide uh, uh, it has been pretty pretty sunny so I think India can uh, probably look at the target of 404 and just wipe it off uh, and you know at least avoid the follow on first and then we can talk about anything else because that's the prime thing that Indians need to do. Well on this note uh, dear fans, friends and subscribers uh, for this cricket happening show that's it for now and see you all tomorrow. Thank you.